Testing, 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 testing. And we are all set. So after just a brief roller coaster ride trying to get this boom arm replacement so we can get the better sound here, finally, obviously, we got the replacement in. It's still not perfect, but I think it's pretty good. So I hope you enjoy the better sound again. Now, check this out. In this video, I wanted to do something a little bit differently here because we are a team. That's the premise of this channel here. And on the channel, I help you make money in the gig economy. If you're doing it as a side hustle, if you're doing it in some marketplaces as a full-time hustle, I want to help you make money. But I also want to not only give you the tips, the tricks, the strategies, right? But I want to answer your questions. So we're going to do just that in this video. I want to look at some recent videos here. I want to dive into your comments here, our team comments, to see if I can help answer some of these questions and pay attention because you might have the same questions. So this one, we're on the highest paying food delivery app is, and I won't tell you the spoiler there, but this one was posted yesterday at the time of filming this video. And check this out. George Taxi says, here in Eastern PA, Uber seems to have the highest per order payouts. That's what we were talking about in this video. Which app pays the most on, you know, single orders like this? The other day I had a stacked order for $42. So a $24 order and an $18 order. This trip took 45 minutes, but well worth it. Well, firstly, congrats on that order, George Taxi. So let me know your thoughts in the comments. What is the best app for single order payouts? So This is a great comment because it really shows us that this is market dependent because here in Pittsburgh on Western PA versus here in Eastern PA, I mean, the video I talked about Grubhub that out of all three of the apps, I've seen 20 and one, at least 30 plus dollar order on Grubhub. But I like this comment here because again, it really depends on your marketplace. And actually right below that one, we can see here Darcel Klesbar comments. And thanks for watching Darcel from Vegas stating we use Grubhub. DoorDash and Uber Eats too. I agree with you. Grubhub does offer more for single orders, but it's far and few between in my marketplace. Uber Eats is our go-to app and DoorDash being our second. We turn on Grubhub when our primary and secondary apps are slow. So the thing I love about this, and let me know if you agree with this, is yeah, I mean, that's the thing. In my opinion, Grubhub is the best for those high single orders. And even what Darcel says here, yeah, I agree. It is kind of fewer and far in between, but it's good to have if you're driving food delivery. Continuing here, Robert states, and Robert, thanks for watching as well, stating, Mike, I understand your reluctance for fast food. Uh, In this video, I had a $11 McDonald's run, and I was kind of worried about weights at drive-thrus. Uh, Robert states, I personally always text the customer that the lobby is closed and I have to go through the drive through Most times I get tipped for the weights by my customer. I think that's a great power hack. And I would actually recommend that because when I got to that McDonald's on this video, I started a timer when I got there until I got to that call box where you place the order and it took 10 minutes and it took another probably two or three minutes just to get from that call box to that second window to pick up the food. So I love that power hack, Robert, just texting the customer saying, hey, again, you have to say, I have to go through the drive-thru because that lobby's closed. So let me ask you a question here because our next comment from Andrew V. Andrew, thanks for watching here. So if you're driving food delivery, do you think it's more luck or skill? If you had to pick one, let's say I would understand if you say both, but if you had to pick one, is it more luck or skill? Well, this comment from Andrew says, I think it depends on luck more. Assuming you got the skill sign mastered, I made $80 in two hours with DoorDash. Congrats on that, Andrew. I would say if push, yeah, if I said push comes to shove, I would kind of agree with that. So that's kind of big that the needle kind of moves more towards luck. And again, like Andrew states here, as long as you got the basics mastered, as long as you're multi-apping, as long as you're staging, waiting in those power strips, the hot spots. if you're driving, maybe doing the summertime strategy here, and you're driving the dinner rush especially, I mean, then what, right? We can't force the apps, the customers to drop us the big order request. I think that's fascinating. So as long as you're doing the basics, I mean, kind of, I would kind of hand it to luck there. 
So let's move on to our next video here titled, I just discovered the worst time to drive food delivery. And I will, well, I won't tell you the time in case you haven't seen it yet. I don't want to spoil it for you. But yeah, you don't want to drive during this time. In my opinion, there's better times to drive. And if you do drive, you may not make as much money here. So let's jump in to your comments here. (laughs) The first one I see here, Randall Gibbons, if you drive on DoorDash, the worst times to drive are 24-7. That's the first time that I saw that comment. So I'm sure there's some truth in that. But why is there truth in that? It's for that marketplace. I mean, okay, so if you're driving in Randall's marketplace, I mean, what marketplace is it? Are you driving either breakfast, lunch, and dinner? Are you researching your hotspots? Are you finding, okay, even within the hotspots, this plaza, I get usually faster orders versus over here, and there's only a few restaurants. Am I still getting fast orders? Well, what about different days of the week? Now, if you're doing all of that, if you're doing all of the basics, if you're watching these videos and you're still, I'd say, averaging, let's say, 16 to maybe 17 sometimes $18 an hour, then yeah, I mean, honestly, it might not be a good fit for your marketplace. I always try to be honest with that because if the numbers don't make sense and you're doing the best practices in your marketplace, literally, it might not be a good fit for you. So... Again, there's some, I guess, probably some humor behind this, but I would research different even times of the year. I wouldn't delete the app. I would look at your numbers and I would say, okay, yeah, Q1 was kind of dead, especially now, Q3, Q4, at the time of filming this video here in 2021, that there may be, well, there are, frankly, better times of the year to drive. So if one's kind of tanking like that, I would try some different apps. So going down from that, Kristen comments, Kristen, thanks for watching here. Mornings are the worst times now that it's summer. Used to be 5 a.m. to 9 a.m. were bumping hours. And that's when people were still learning slash teaching from home. I don't mind the midday, but here in South Texas, it's 100 degrees by 11 a.m., Uh, Well, Kristen, I got family in San Antonio, Texas. I've visited plenty of times. I feel you on the Texas heat. There's actually some great points that Kristen makes here. So number one, Kristen states, uh, mornings are the worst times now that it's summer. So what have we seen really from these companies and at least what I've seen statistically, uh, I've seen your comments as well, that it is the summer slowdown. Things are reopening and consumers who are out and about really any day may be actually doing things versus staying inside and ordering a food delivery. Because that second point here, when people were still learning and teaching from home, working from home, right? 2020 was probably, I would say, yeah, the biggest boom in food delivery. We saw these companies with really 300 plus percent growth in their food delivery with a DoorDash and Uber Eats. If you didn't know, Uber's portfolio basically was 80% ride share and 20% food delivery. I don't know, in 2018, whatever it was, 2019. And in 2020, that literally flipped. That 80% of Uber's portfolio was on Uber Eats and food delivery. Now, this next comment here, you got to see it. If you're thinking about leaving the video, come back, watch this if you drive for DoorDash. Because this comment from John states, if we all ignore those cheap orders, then they will raise it and we can make more money. Decent money, like $20 per hour minimum. I think, again, there's some maybe, I don't know, some jest in there, some humor, what have you. But there is some real truth in that. Why? It's based on how your pay is calculated from DoorDash. So if you didn't know, Dash or desirability goes into your base pay that can range from $2 to $10 on your payout. So... I mean, literally, if Dashers continually decline in order, it will, based on DoorDash's own stated algorithm, raise that base pay and overall just that pay in general. You know, that was actually part of the premise of the hashtag decline now. Yeah, the decline now movement on DoorDash. Now, here was my warning with that, that working as a collective 
may be seen as trying to game the Dasher platform. That is against terms of service. And if there was any official organizing like honestly, that group that had, I think, a couple hundred thousand followers, that that could be means of deactivating your account. However, as an independent contractor, if you just take that kind of insight for what it's worth on your own to run your own business, let's say, then you're allowed to do that on your own. So you are, are, you are allowed to decline rides. And then again, collectively, it would, in theory, and based on the algorithms, raise the overall pay over time. And you know what? I'm actually seeing more confirmation of that summertime strategy. So Joe Gig comments, I certainly miss my early morning shifts. Making bank on Uber Eats, Starbucks deliveries. Mornings are completely dead ever since school let out. And I did see another comment down here below as well. See if we can find it here. So a little bit below that, Nigel comments, the lunch shift was good, morning shift, tons of bad orders, no one wanted and sent to me. So again, I am seeing it. I think what we're seeing here collectively, again, let me know in the comments if you agree with this, is Again, it's that summertime strategy. It's maybe going all in on lunch, especially dinner rush. It seems like these morning runs are tapering off. I'll have to keep an eye on that. And uh, definitely, again, comment down below so we know. Do you agree with these comments that really those mornings are or seemingly tapering off here as far as orders? So I got one more for you. I think I saved the best for last. Uh, This is if you drive on the number one app. That is a DoorDash, of course, as a Dasher. And this was the breaking news of DoorDash's updated pay model. If you haven't seen that, definitely check out this video. And I mean, most of our audience either hasn't seen this or they just saw it this month at the time of filming in July of 2021. So let's see what you had to say on this video here because actually this one sparked a ton of conversation. We can see 364 comments so far. And I can see your frustration in the comments. Next update, you pay DoorDash for the privilege to deliver for them. Oh man. Followed by, uh, we want better base pay. Best we can do is keep lowering it. I mean, I saw this once the, the video was posted. And again, if you haven't seen that, you're going to want to see the details on this. Okay, so check this out. So Flu says, Flu, thanks for watching, commenting. Also, they don't take into account most long orders pulled you out of your zone. So this isn't profitable at all. So if you don't know, I'll just kind of tell you here on the long distance deliveries is you'll get 10 to 30% more on that initial base pay on DoorDash for the longer distance deliveries. And now that I think about it, there was never a threshold given for what qualifies as a long distance delivery. Huh. I think that's pretty interesting. Let me know if you've heard anything about that. But like Flu says, I mean, yeah, those long distance orders, it does, it pulls you out of a scheduled zone, which seemingly is more important than ever on DoorDash. They'll they'll give you like a warning that says, hey, you got to get back in your scheduled zone. So it's not profitable, he says. And I mean, that's what Matt talked about in part of our, our recent videos, that if I get pulled out 15 minutes here in Pittsburgh, I mean, there's nothing up there. If I get pulled north, let's say, and it's also out of my schedule zone, so I may have to come back even to get another order. I remember this one. This is what I commented on. So Marco Anzio, thanks for watching, comments, on which planet are these orders taking only 15 minutes? The average wait time to pick up an order in my market is seven to 10 minutes. So what Marco was commenting here is the, the mock-up that DoorDash gave us on this pay announcement stated, oh, what was it? It was, I think, I think it was a short one, maybe three miles for 15 minutes. And yeah, like Marco says, for the entire thing to take 15 minutes it is basically unheard of, like he comments here. So... You have to drive to the pickup location. You got to pick it up. You got to drop it off. I mean, I've had super seamless pickups where literally, yeah, I get there and it's that. It's pretty easy. Those are ideal. But I guarantee you, at least half of orders aren't like that, especially with parking, with getting to the restaurant. They're not quite ready, right? And then this comment from James, I would not take a trip for seven miles for a dollar more. And I commented on this one because, I mean, that's literally the example that DoorDash gave is, I don't know, it was like 650 payouts and they'll give you now 750. 
But as the points that we saw earlier, dude, I'm still out of my zone, man. I, I got to drive back into a hot spot. Yeah, I mean, 15 minutes out of my zone, it's going to take me right in the middle of nowhere. So maybe combine that with that previous point, though, is yeah, it is a dollar more. But if it's still not good enough, you decline it. It's obviously, right? Which, based on DoorDash's algorithm, should even further raise that order. So I enjoyed going through your comments. Some a little bit different, right? We got to mix it up here, give you something a little bit different here because I enjoyed this. Uh, Obviously, there are hundreds and thousands of comments. So you're busy. I'm busy. I can't always be in the comment section. But it's nice to do something like this, you know, acknowledge some of your comments, some of the top comments, questions as well. So let me know if you want to see more videos like this. If you did get value in this video, definitely drop me a like. And you can also click or tap screen here for my newest video, as well as a video recommended for you. And I'll see you in the next one.